you won the lottery when you were born in Norway. This is a sentence I've heard many times at school growing up. And it's true. Norway is a pretty good country to live in. The poverty rate is one of the lowest in the world. And it's known, it's known as a country that has respect for human rights. However, if you're walking down the main streets of Norway's capital, Oslo, you will see people in poverty, dressed in dirty clothes, begging for money. Some of them will stop you and ask you for money in broken English. Others will talk to you in a foreign language, pointing at a picture of a child, often with a desperate look in their eyes. But these people are not Norwegian. They are Romani, a group of people that originally came from the northern parts of India and has been well established in Europe for hundreds of years. Most of the Romani people in Europe live in Eastern Europe, most of them in poverty. And some of them try to escape this by coming to Norway and other Scandinavian countries. But we don't want to be in our country because we have our own problems to deal with. Norway is a welfare state, which means that the government is supposed to play a key role in protecting the social and economic well-being of its citizens. And this sounds pretty good. However, it's one word in that definition that really is emphasized, and that is the word citizens. In Norway and the rest of Scandinavia, Romani people are being discriminated against. And most of them have a standard of living that's way below what we consider to be poverty. And the treatment of the Romani people shows the hypocrisy of the Norwegian government and a big part of the Norwegian population. That you should have the right for a decent standard of living and to not be discriminated against. Not because you're a human being, but because you were born with the right birth certificate. And in the past few years, there have been many cases where Romani people have been discriminated against. In 2012, a Romani man was denied being served at a McDonald's in Norway's capital, Oslo. And the explanation from the people working there was that we don't serve your kind of people. Recently, a Romani woman was denied having breakfast together with the other guests at the hotel she was staying at in Norway's <laughs> neighboring country, Sweden. Even though she could prove that she was a guest at the hotel, she had to have her coffee in the hotel lobby. She was wearing traditional Romani clothing, and this was most likely the reason why she was stopped. But in Europe, we don't have very good experiences when it comes to stopping people for their ethnicity or their religion. And it's not that long ago since it was a yellow star on your chest that would deny you access in the exactly same way. In many Norwegian cities, you have to get registered if you want to beg for money in the streets. And one can argue that it's nothing wrong with this law itself but it seems to be used especially to target Romani. And in Sweden, this was taken even further. And in 2013, it was discovered that the Swedish police had a register with over 4,000 Romani people. Over 1,000 of them were children. 52 of them were only two years old. The Swedish police should probably wait a few more years before they suspect these two-year-old children of being criminals. Because in Europe, we don't have very good experiences when it comes to registering people or putting them into lists because of their ethnicity or their religion. And it's not that long ago since being in a register like that meant that you were going to a concentration camp. But it's true that many Romani people in Norway and the rest of Scandinavia are committing crime. And according to the Norwegian police, 
more Romani people than the region, has been behind more of the heavy organized crime in the past few years. However, what the news articles and newspapers that are covering these cases often tend not to mention is that this crime is not the problem itself, it's just a symptom of it. The Romani people in Norway escape from treatment in their own countries that is far worse than they experience here. And violence and threats from far-right groups have been increasing in the past few years. According to Amnesty International, hundreds of thousands of Romani people live segregated from the rest of the population in their own countries, in camps and informal settlements. This is often a result of governmental policies that prevents them from living anywhere else. And the living conditions are often terrible. Tens of thousands of Romani people or children are being segregated into own schools and classes with an easier curriculum and schools and classes for children with mental disabilities. And when you're combining this with already existing discrimination in the society, it's possible to imagine how difficult it is to get a job. And of course, this will result in crime. And it's not a coincidence that many Romani people then choose to go to Norway and the rest of Scandinavia, where there is so much wealth. But it's somewhat ironic that Norway, a country that in 2013 spent over five and a half billion dollars on welfare in other countries, wants to send out the people in their own streets that's begging for money for survival. Yeah, the Norwegian way of getting rid of this type of poverty is to simply just send out the poor people by passing laws that make it illegal to sleep outside in parks and on sidewalks. And yes, it will look like the poverty is gone, but this is only on an extremely superficial level. I want Norway to be a country that can actually live up to its reputation of a country that has respect for human rights. And to the people of Norway and the rest of Scandinavia, I want you to, when you're walking in the streets and you see someone sitting there who's Romani and who's asking you for money, that you will not get mad. That you will not get annoyed at this person sitting there in rags because he or she is blocking your way when you're walking home for dinner and a shower in your heated apartment. That you will not automatically assume that this is someone who's going to commit, commit crime or steal from you, or that this is a bad person. But can you put yourself in a situation where you're being discriminated against? You're forcefully being segregated from the rest of the population in your own country. You live under terrible conditions. You were not allowed to have a decent education, so you cannot get a job. But you still have yourself and your family to feed. And say to yourself, I would not commit crime to survive. Thank you.